From the Opepco Studios in Oklahoma City, you're watching The Press Row. I'm Jenny Carlson here with Barry Trammell. It's time for our five and five segment, five topics, five minutes total, means a minute each. Let's get right to it, Barry. Was seven games enough for Meta World, whatever, peace, chaos, whatever you want to call him? Well, no one in the state of Oklahoma thinks it was enough, but people in, you know, in greater LA probably think it's too much. <laughs> I think David Stern hit it pretty close. I was, I was uh, like you, I was looking at 10, but seven is a stout uh, number. The only way, I, the only reason I say you, maybe you go to 10 from seven is that would get you into a second round series against the, probably the Thunder, could hurt, could hurt the Lakers against the team that was uh, injured. But I think seven games is a stout penalty. Yeah, and that, I, that was sort of my thought when I initially said, go the first two rounds of the playoffs for his suspension. Leave it as an open-ended number. That way he's not involved with the Thunder series. But that's a little hard to do, Barry. I get that. You know, that's a, that's a, uh, it's really open-ended. And I think putting a number on it is what the NBA normally does. So it, it, it was about what I thought. I mean, I, I thought anywhere between six, seven, eight, to 10 was probably about what he was going to get. All right, how about topic number two? And it's another Thunder-related topic. Can the Thunder survive a playoff series without James Harden? Well, we know he's going to play. We don't know how he's going to play. How, how are they going to fare? Uh, they're not going to play. They're not going to fare well at all if James Harden's not well. Uh, they can't win a series without him. Doesn't matter if it's Dallas, Denver, second round, whatever. James Harden has to play well. This team has become top-heavy with, with Durant and Westbrook. If you, get, if you throw Harden in the mix, then all of a sudden the top heaviness pays off. But when, it's, uh, when there's only two guys contributing uh, on, the, on the scoring side, too tough to win. Uh, has, Thunder has to have James Harden. Yeah, I agree. And it, we won't know how he is until game one of the, of the, the first round playoff series. You know, the Thunder said on Thursday night, their, or on Wednesday night, their regular season finale, he had been cleared. He was available to play, but did not play against Denver. Um, very much, I'm sure, a precautionary measure just to give him an extra day to, to rest and heal. But we won't know, Barry, until he steps out there. Is this a guy that, get, you know, who gets to the basket, who loves to drive and create his own shot? Is that going to be there? Is he going to be hesitant about that? You just don't know. But clearly, his playmaking ability, they have to have it. I mean, they have to have it. And I have to say, his defense, too, doesn't hurt him either. He's playing know. better defense. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, hey, let's go to a little football, Barry. Did OSU make the right call in its quarterback derby, which was no call? <laughs> well, I think, um, I think uh, you can't make a decision if you don't know. You can't make a decision just to make a decision. So I think so far the Cowboys are handling this fine. Mike Gundy wanted a quarterback for the summer. He still might, he still, still might name one, but if you don't know, you don't know. And I think naming a guy who hasn't won it, who hasn't earned it, hurts you more in the long run. So uh, I, I still think uh, Gundy might do something here in the next week or so. But um, you, you, can't go, you can't go manufacturing uh, news. You can't go manufacturing results. If there's still a competition, you got to keep the competition open. Well, and I think if they were to have named someone this early on, it would be a pretty strong statement that this is our guy, this is who we're going with. And, you know, to, to, to not do that, I think it, it, it's a smart move if they're not ready. If they were, if they're 100% sure, and every offensive coach came into that meeting room on Wednesday and said, this is the guy, I definitely think he's who we should go with, I, I have no problem with it. But if you're not sure, and after Saturday, I think everybody saw what a conundrum this is. All three of these guys have times when you're like, hey, he should be the guy. And... They just, I don't think they had enough evidence to go with any of the three. From what we saw, there is no clear cut leader. No, I don't think so. All right. Hey, Barry, um, have you ever wanted to run a marathon? No, I haven't. And Oklahoma, I can Oklahoma City Marathons this weekend. You're going to get out there? And I'm not going to run. Okay. And I can tell you, my biggest, my biggest uh, problem with me running a marathon, among many reasons, boredom. <laughs> I mean, it'd take me, what, well, I don't know, how long would it take me? Five four hours? Or five four, hours? Four or yeah, five yeah, hours for yeah. me to run a marathon if I, if I was able to make it. What am I going to do with my mind for four and a, that's not, it's not 1957. I, we don't sit on front porches and contemplate and meditate. Maybe I mean, we we're, should. I'm, maybe we should, but we don't. <laughs> I mean, that's not the way we're wired. At least no, I'm not wired. I got to be doing stuff for four or five hours. If I got four or five hours, I don't even play golf anymore. If I had four hours, uh, I might play golf. I don't have four hours anymore. 
It's a boredom issue. I need those five hours to do stuff. Well, you know, I have thought about it. I've covered the marathon, the Oklahoma City Marathon. It's now in its 12th year. I've covered a bunch of these races, and it's super cool. If you've never been either to the start, which is very early, or the finish line, which you could sleep in a little longer and go see that, it's worth your time. It's a very cool event to see all these runners and to realize what they've accomplished. I always think, I always have a moment every year I cover it, I should do this. But then I think about, it's not just the four to five hours on race day, it's all the preparation. It's the 18 mile training runs and the 20 mile training runs. That's what I can't get over. What's the long as you've run? Uh, like probably five or six miles. Okay. I, I, but that's not 18. No, I ran 200 yards once. <laughs> I think a dog was chasing me. <laughs> Uh, lastly, was John L. Smith the way to go at Arkansas, Barry? I think it was an excellent choice by Arkansas. Was John L. Smith the way to go at Arkansas? Yes. Was Arkansas the way to go for John L. Smith? No. Question mark, yes. No. I mean, this guy was on, this guy gets hired by his alma mater. This guy's coached at the top. Louisville, then Michigan State at the Big Ten. Now he's been special teams coordinator, obviously on the downside of his career at Arkansas. His alma mater says, hey, Weber State, you want to come back, coach us? Uh, John L. Smith says, sure. Mm -hmm. And he stays 139 days from December 6th until this week. Uh, you know, we've seen a lot of coaches turn their back on, on programs and players. Um, and, th and this one goes near the top. A guy that uh, basically coaches a spring practice and, and then walks away from his alma mater uh, for one shot. You know, he's going to Arkansas so he can go maybe have a big time year, which the Razorbacks could have. Maybe he's in line for the permanent head coaching job. Maybe that's what he's thinking. Um, but uh, to me, it, it reflects very poorly on John L. Smith, the way he's treated his alma mater. He out Todd Graham, Todd Graham, or out Bobby Petrino, Bobby Petrino when it comes to leaving teams. So, yeah, that, I thought that was in bad taste. But, uh, you know, Arkansas going with an interim coach, that's what I always thought was going to happen. I was surprised, though, that they went and hired somebody from uh, off campus. I figured they would promote within, have sort of like an Ohio State situation where uh, you know they did that interim year uh, with the offensive coordinator. But obviously, this was a this was not going to end well. Regardless, I think they made it even worse by going out and hiring a guy who hadn't even coached a game yeah, at his now, school. I mean, I think it works well for Arkansas. I mean, I I, I can see what the Jeff PR did. The PR hit is a hit. Yeah, it's a hit though. But I mean, he knows the players. He knows the staff. It's a, it's a good, solid situation. It's, it's what Arkansas probably needed at the time, but it was in very, it reflects very poorly on John L. Smith. And they could win a national championship, so people are going to talk about this for a long time. Be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoman.